Hi, I'm Xavier Bray and I'm the chief curator here at Dutch Picture Gallery. And it's pretty amazing to have this picture here by El Greco here at Dulwich because mainly it goes completely against the taste of our founders of this gallery. They liked classical painting, they liked to collect what was fit for a king. And El Greco was totally unfashionable in the 18th century and throughout the 19th century. But he made a major comeback towards the end of the 19th century when this picture uh, was found. It was found in a terrible condition and it was so bad that they had to cut the top part. So a lot of it is missing. But it entered the collection of a Basque painter called Suluaga, a very famous portrait painter. But the key thing here is that in 1905, when he had his studio in Paris, who would come in and pay respect to it? The young Picasso. He was totally obsessed by this picture. For him, it was a talisman, it was a, an icon of, of modern painting. And actually, it helped him to work out his very famous painting, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, which is now at the MoMA in New York. Now, the reason why he loved this picture is because of the way it's built, the way it's constructed. Um, he's got this, there's this very large figure here of St. John the Evangelist in ecstasy, looking up to the heavens. And then you've got these nudes behind, uh, looking after each other. Basically, you've got the, these white nudes here, and then these much darker ones. But this one is pulling over a cover on top of it. And at the time when Picasso saw it, um, he thought that this was the allegory of sacred and profane love. They saw these figures as being um, figures coming out, uh, re-emerging from the earth and being um, images of, of love and, and, and eroticism. And that's what really got him going for his Demoiselle d'Avignon. But what is more interesting for Picasso is the way that El Greco uses these very dark outlines around the figures as a way of bringing them out. And that's what he was fascinated about. It was not just the figures, the actual corporal, corporal aspect of the figure, but the spaces in between. And that led him, that helped him towards the abstraction of a composition. The problem is Picasso didn't realize where this picture originally came from. And he didn't actually know the subject matter. The actual subject matter is very important in order to understand what El Greco was doing. El Greco painted this specifically for a hospital in Toledo in 1610. And when we look at this, we think it's a, a modern work of art. A lot of people actually have come to the gallery and think this is a contemporary painting. But actually, it was painted in 1610 specifically for an altarpiece. The painting had a very specific function. It was, of course, uh, there to alleviate the, the, the fact that these people were facing death. Um, and from a religious point of view, the subject matter is very important. It's the opening of the fifth seal. It's a passage from Revelations by St. John the Evangelist, when he has these very uh, incredible visions um, that basically announce uh, what the future um, and the apocalypse. Um, but in this case, it's when uh, God decides to help the martyrs to look after them as they wait for the resurrection. So what he's done, God has sent down some covers in order to look after those who have, martyred, have been martyred um, and to keep them warm as they await the resurrection. So if you imagine, get that subject matter in mind and put it back in a hospital, it's the kind of thing that as a sick person you would have liked to have looked at because it assures you life after death. But the way El Greco does that um, is that he constructs this incredible composition as a way of, of really involving you into the picture and, and take you into it. Now, unfortunately, the top half has gone, so you don't really know what St. John is looking at, but it probably was the, the actual opening of the fifth seal with the sacrificial lamb on top of it. So he's having that vision, and then the vision is illustrated below. Now, El Greco seems to have been very interested in using plaster and wax models in order to inform his, his ideas of how to paint the, the human figure. And actually, when you look at these figures, you can see that um, sometimes, particularly the female figures, it's probably the same one, but with wax, he could have bent the arm and put it back in accordingly so that he could use it as a model. And that is why you have these very strange ways of painting these figures, because they're almost individually treated, although they relate. You can feel that with the black that he's added around it, he tries to bring each of the figures out in a very sculptural manner. 
And I think that's what particularly fascinated uh, Picasso was this construction or also deconstruction of the material figure as, as you look at it. The other thing that Art Greco does is he uses these very strong uh, colors, these blues, these reds, these greens, these yellows as a way of really bringing electrical excitement to the composition. Um, and this is what really brings it to life. Now, Greco painted this towards the end of his career when he was incredibly confident in his style uh, of, of, of painting. It's important to remember he began as an icon painter uh, in Crete. He then went to Venice where he discovered the, the use of oil paint. He then went to Rome and discovered the, the Michelangelesque figure. And he brings all this together to produce these incredibly visionary paintings, which in their, own, in their time were very popular in Toledo and res well respected. He had patrons who paid for these pictures. But as soon as he dies in 1614, his art dies with him. And that is the problem. He basically disappears. And when he re-emerges at the late 19th century, early 20th century, it really, he really comes back with a, a real sort of uh, a bomb almost. And that's why this is really a revolutionary painting. Um, and you can tell from just the size of it and the perspective down the main gallery, you can see it still have that, it has its vibrancy that um, makes El Greco one of the greatest artists.